access to capital is an important part of doing business. Micro, small, medium, and large scale businesses depend on capital. As we talk about corporate finance, it's important to recognize that there are multiple sources of which businesses should be able to access capital. For example, we have the debt capital market, we have the equity capital market, and we have the credit capital market. In order to nurture and create an enabling environment for businesses to grow and thrive, it is absolutely necessary to bring the issue of corporate finance to the front burner of discussion. Today, we're going to have a high level overview of these capital markets. And my vision, our vision at Global Capital Inc. and 10X Branded and Marketing LLC out of New York is to trigger thoughts and to store up conversation and dialogue among the private sector leaders across the region and the world as it relates to corporate finance. Of course, the playing field is not level. Uh, developed economy, they have a tremendous competitive advantage, financial competitive advantage against developed and middle income economies. Now, just before I get into the, today's program, and do permit me to say, if you're in business uh, or you intend to get into business, I want to encourage you to like, subscribe, and share. So you will be the first to get these podcasts that we are bringing to you on a regular basis. In the event that you are joining me for the first time, my name is Gary Thompson. I'm a business development consultant by profession. I'm a humanitarian by nature, and I'm the self-published best-selling author for several books, including Billionaire Codes and Manager's Toolkit. My most recent book is titled 10X Branding and Marketing Blueprint, The Psychology of Business. And you don't want to miss out on this book because this book really tells you how to start a business and how to scale that business with local, regional, and international relevance. Now, getting back to today's topic, we will have a high-level conversation on capital markets. Now, one of the places that businesses go to to source capital is better known as the stock market. And uh, as we look at stock market across the Caribbean region of the world, we can see the kind of market capitalization that they have. Now let's stay, start with Trinidad. Trinidad has about $17.9 billion on the asset management. Jamaica has about $15.95 billion. Bahamas has about $5 billion dollars on the asset management. In Guyana, however, we have a we have a little below two billion US dollars on the asset management. So that certainly speak of a, a gap in terms of market capitalization. And by market capitalization it simply means monies that are available via your stock exchange market to be invested into businesses. Now, I would often say that the Caribbean businesses are playing among giants because at the Caribbean level, the combined resources does not reach a trillion dollars. But when we look at the big giants, let's take North America, for example, North America has approximately 25.9 trillion US dollars 
in market capitalization. This certainly speaks of a massive amount of disposable income available to that market to place on their investment. As we begin to look at capital markets, corporate finance, it is also very important for us to recognize that equity capital is only one of those platforms in which to access capital. Today, I want us to begin by doing a little deep dive into, we're gonna begin this by looking at the debt capital market. And this represents uh, commercial banks across the world. As we speak to the issue of debt capital, as we speak to the issue of equity capital, and as we speak to the issue of credit capital, it's very important for you to keep four things in mind. One is an understanding of those debt portfolio. Two is an understanding of how to access those debt portfolio. Three is to understand smart debt leverage. And by extension is for you to understand debt mitigation. Debt mitigation is one of those subjects that you don't want to take for granted because this allows you to understand your principal balance, interest rates, debt cost over the debt life cycle. And it equips you with the right financial tools to be able to mitigate that debt process. So again, regardless of how high the interest rate is, by being able to leverage debt mitigation tools, you can bring down that debt cost. And as you buy into equity investment, it is important for you to consider your exit point long before you sign that deal. Failing to take all of these things into consideration can leave you exposed. Now, as one begins to look at the debt capital in many parts of the Caribbean and developing world, uh, a middle income economy, there is a lot of complaint about high interest rates associated with debt. A couple of things that I want to point out here today is to really help the general public. And of course, there are many persons who would know what I'm talking about. But for those who don't fully understand the system, I simply want to point out that there is a major difference between a BLOC and a business loan. BLOC means business equity line of credit against a business loan. Now, a business loan is calculated on collateralized, amortized interest. What that means is that the interest is compounded at the beginning of the year, the interest is calculated. Either at the end of the year or the beginning of that year, interest is calculated for the entire period, has against equity. Bill up the business equity line of credit, the interest is calculated on a simple interest base. That means it's calculated on a reducing balance. These are important to understand, concepts to understand. And in terms of, of capital market leverage, uh, being able to understand these tools and making an informed and educated decision as to how to leverage these tools can save you hundreds of thousands of dollars and perhaps millions of dollars over the debt life cycle. This kind of conversation has to be amplified and developed middle income economies in order to give businesses the competitive advantage. There are other debt tools, like for example, there is HELA against a home mortgage. And again, there is major difference here. The same principle applies. There is also what is known as credit card. And of course, in the most developing and middle income economies, 
when we speak of credit card, we're talking in most cases of personal credit. I'm going to elevate this conversation shortly in terms of credit. All right, we will talk a little bit about personal credit against business credit, and this being an important platform for businesses because the top 100 companies, the companies that are today generating uh, between 6 billion USD and 120 billion USD annually, day at one time, and perhaps even right now, they still leverage business credit to move their business mission forward. So we'll come back to talk about that shortly. So we have some limitation in terms of a broad portfolio in the, the DCM. And I believe as an entrepreneur, who's involved in representing businesses, these kinds of conversation must be amplified for the simple reason that over the last 10, 15, 20 years, um, 25 years when I first entered the market, this conversation was on the table. Today, it is still on the table. And I believe that uh, creating that platform where we can talk about this respectfully, share ideas respectfully, it perhaps can set the stage where we start to pull our best minds together that are going beyond the top shop and move it into the workshop where they are developing strategic game plan and blueprints and they have the project managers that are set in timelines, looking at completion criteria and working to achieve a project within uh, project integrity. And that is to ensure that we can increase the portfolios that are available to private sector. We can create a greater ease of capital access and in doing business. Along with this, we have overdraft. It's a, another tool that is used to help businesses to access capital. So there are many more in the developed world. So what we've looked at so far is the capital portfolios, some of the capital portfolios available in the debt capital market. Um, understanding business, taking the time to register a strong business and ensure that your business has a business checking account. Uh, there are some leverages. I will not get into that today, uh, but in the event that you need uh, more advice, more consultancy, more mentorship and coaching and support in this regard, feel free to use the number on the screen and reach out to our subject matter experts, because we have certified public accountants, we have economists, we have financial advisors, uh, we have a team of legal minds that are prepared to work with you to give you the best advice to grow a diversified scale, to build your business, your brand with local, regional, and international relevance. Now, this conversation on debt capital is not exhaustive. My objective here is to give you some ideas and to stimulate conversation around this. I wanted to shift attention a little bit now to equity and capital. And uh, equity capital is another smart way in uh, accessing capital to grow, diversify, and scale your business. Why? Because debt is different than equity. And now let me just point out some of those differences. With debt, you have monthly debt obligation. With equity, 
you may have annual dividend obligation. And dividend is only expected to pay out once the business is profitable. So that's a big difference, and that's like night and day. Um, many uh, equity investors who are coming into the business may make a conscious decision that in the first, second, and third years, they are not going to cash out or not going to take out any um, dividend. Why? Because they want to allow all the available cash to be pumped back into your business. And just think about this, the major difference. Uh, uh, let us take, for example, you are paying, uh, you have a monthly debt obligation with the, the DCM, and your monthly debt obligation is approximately $100,000 a month. This simply means that at the end of the year, you are paying $1.2 million in debt obligation. And can you think about what you can do with $1.2 million or $2.4 million being freed up cash that you can actually pump back into the business? This can go into... Uh, ensuring that you're doing adequate market research to build out healthy relationship with your specific target market. You're extracting the data based on the relationship that you're building out with your target market to build targeted products and services. All right, a range of things that can be used with those capital to ensure that you are obtaining a competitive advantage and hence the need the importance of access to capital, and hence the need for us having this conversation. Of course, we know that capital is not the way at all to the success of the business, but we're going to talk capital today. Now, as we look at the advantages and disadvantages with debt and equity, it is also important to recognize the portfolios that exist in the equity space. Remember, we always talk about equity, debt portfolio or capital market portfolio, capital market access, capital market leverage, and capital market mitigation. As you get into this space, you need to think through this entire process. If you can't do it, my advice to you is get in contact with your PFA, your professional financial advisors, or your personal financial advisors that can mentor and coach you and guide you through this process. If you don't have one, my recommendation is reach out to us at Global Capital Inc. and 10X Branded and Marketing um, LLC out of New York. And we will be happy to expose you to our subject matter expert that can talk you through this entire process so you can make an informed decision. Some of those decisions that you would want to make is, <clears throat> should you, as we look at the private equity space, or the public equity space, is it best to leverage joint venture partnership as a means of accessing equity capital? Is it better to access merger and acquisition as a smarter way to access equity capital. What are the difference between the two? And um, who's helping you to make this kind of informed um, decision? These are important tenants of the equity capital market that you need to take the time, the talent, and the resources to ensure that you really understand it. And there's a list of them, and I'm just gonna go through them quickly. So we look so far at joint venture partnership. You also have merger and acquisition. You also have the venture capitalist. You have the private equity investors. But let's talk a little bit about the venture capitalist. The venture capitalist has a very high risk appetite because these are investors accredited investors that 
are fully aware of the risk that they are taking. They are taken in tech savvy companies, they're invested in tech startup, they're invested in medical research and new product innovation. And they're taking a risk because of the fact that they're fully aware that when these businesses, if these businesses are given a fair chance to scale, they're gonna make a kill in terms of their equity share and their equity value going up. Uh, but there are major risks associated here. But to do this, it's important for you to work with your economist, uh, to work with your financial specialist that can help you to take stock of the realities in the market. You need to understand the market accommodators and the market enabler. But don't let's go into that area. We're talking about the portfolios that exist to access capital. The venture capitalist plays a tremendous role in working with business startup to give them that support to move their ideas forward. My advice to you also is that as you start to think about these things, you want to link with the VC that are not only bringing cash flow to the operation, but they're bringing a fair degree of market intelligence to that market. And they can help you build out relationship with those enablers to help you to fast track the cash flow potential and the growth of the organization. So there are smart ways and not so smart ways to identify equity partners and equity investors. And all of these things are things that you need to think through and see through long before you sign on those dotted lines. You also have the private equity investors, the PE. Now the PE are risk averse. They are just like the DCM, they hate risk. So they are the kind of people that will ask you to front your historical financial data. They're gonna ask you to front your corporate culture. They're gonna ask you to front your financial projection. And uh, all of these things are absolutely necessary in their eyes. By looking at your historical financial data, it tells them about the financial health of your organization. By looking at your corporate culture, they will be able to tell you how well you can manage absenteeism and staff turnover. And those things will ultimately have a tremendous impact on the cash flow and potential of the organization. By looking at your uh, financial projections and your team dynamics will ultimately tell them what is your vision and if you have the right team dynamics and team management system to move the organization towards its corporate and financial goals. And they're going to dig in deep. They're going to drill in deep to ensure that you have all of this and you're living up to all of these expectations. So follow. once you're following me, I have talked a lot about historical financial data. I've talked a lot about corporate culture. We have built out an ecosystem that speaks about these issues. So look back at some of those videos. I will continue to bring in new videos on the importance of these things. But leveraging the PE, private equity investing is another way to access capital. And as an entrepreneur, my role is us to give you this information. And as time progress, is to link you with the right partners in the right way, in the healthiest of ways. We're not gonna link for link in sake. We're gonna link and ensure that we're giving you the protection that you need to protect your business interests. As it relates to playing in the equity space, you want cash out. You must know your cash out. You either go in IPO, you either go in LBO, or you're going buy back. There are a few other approaches that you can use. You still need to know it or ensure that your PFA your financial advisors, professional financial advisors, is giving you 
the right information and helping you to make the best decision in this regard. Another way in which, again, you can raise capital is go at IPO. But to go IPO, depending on which part of the world, there is pre-qualification criteria, just like the commercial banks. And in some world, it requires hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars, to reach one of those pre-qualifications, along with having your, you know, your business register as an um, INC and LLC, and having your business um, register, and having your board of directors and those factors. Uh, they also look at cash flow health. You know, they also look at the, the health uh, of the organization to pre-qualify to get here. Um, so this here is a big boy space in most part of the world. Um, so it's a means to access capital. And largely because of some of the barriers that exist here, we have some barriers in the DCM, we have some barriers in the, 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 the ECM, and it's important to know it. And, and we're gonna make some comparative analysis for this when I start to talk about the CCM, credit capital marketing. You don't wanna miss this. I'm gonna give you some critical information here. So along with this, you have LBOs, all right? And the LBO is a means of where you yourself cash out of the business. You allow the business to scale, you allow the business to grow, and then you, you find an LBO partner and you cash out of the business. And you use all of that funds, could be hundreds of millions or billions of dollars, to live the life of your dream, to retire early, to flip it back into other forms of business, all right? There are people out there that commit time, talent, and resources to build an excellent brand, largely because they want to list it on the stock market. They become an IPO, and then eventually they move it to an LBO, a leveraged buyout, where they walk away with a solid amount of disposable income to live the life of their dream. So all of this is possible, all right? So, what about Sovereign Wealth Fund? Can Sovereign Wealth Fund be leveraged as a form of equity? Yes, it can. Traditionally, uh, SWF is invested out of that country. But is there any law, either law of nature or law of man, that says that a portion of the SWF cannot be reinvested locally? into businesses, and of course you can. So in looking at this, in looking at this, there is a number of possible things. I talk about this in previous broadcasts. One of the critical reasons that, you know, governments take their capital and put it on the international investment is because one confidence in the international market to uh, cash flow potential from those international market and they're certainly going to add to their revenue base and make the gdp of the economy look good but i'm saying that as we look at the needs of domestic markets as we look at there needs to grow, diversify, and scale, and locally, regional, international. The importance of capital in this process. It is important for us to identify a diverse financial portfolio and start to speak to these issues in a manner that can truly uh, provide that enabling environment. As we say, government provide an enabling environment. Perhaps this could be a subject matter for consideration as one of the enablers to ensure that businesses are getting access to capital at low interest rate, at, you know, at competitive rate, and they're also given the technical support by the BSOs um, to minimize risk associated with debt. 
as we talk about how to leverage SWF, server development, I must continuously repeat myself here. As we talk about capital leverage, we talk about capital leverage from a capital responsible manner. Meaning that we talk about capital portfolios, we talk about how to access those capital portfolios. Perhaps if you work with structures in front, they help you to bill out these portfolios and price these portfolios and manage these portfolios. But we also talk to you about leverage, smart debt leverage, smart equity leverage. And more so, we speak to you about smarter ways to mitigate debt. And that's how to buy it, understanding the principal ceiling, understanding the principal cost, either interest or dividend, and also understanding the life cycle. More importantly, is how to mitigate the cost associated with that, bringing down the debt cost, bringing down the life cycle, building up security and safety net at all levels. All right. Those who are invested in you, they get back their money earlier because of the fact that you're working with strategic business support organizations that is helping to mitigate that the risk associated with that debt portfolio. And guess what? That is flipping several times and that is creating the opportunity for you to cash flow that like a cash flow way beyond perhaps what international dividends payout may give you. Perhaps 10% of that portfolio can remain back home for some investment back into business. This is us thought stimulated. It's not an exhausted conversation. It's something for us to bring to the table as we talk about creating that enabling space for businesses to go, grow, and strive and integrate into regional and international trade. Against the point that I've said earlier, with a market capitalization of a little below two billion U.S. dollars, competing even at the Caribbean level, where they have 17.56 billion US dollars competing with the Americans that have 25.9 trillion US dollars on the market capitalization. How can two, close to 2 billion US dollars compete with trillions of dollars in, in, you know, in, in capital access? Is this really creating a tremendous advantage for businesses or is this posing a disadvantage for businesses? This is thought stimulating. This is a high level uh, discussion on capital markets. And I encourage you to join the conversation. It's not an attack, it's a friendly open discussion on interest related to the private sector, on interest relating to national development because the beauty about all of this as we talk about you know taking swf and pumping it back into business what are some of the possibilities that can happen here you build up a healthy name with the private sector private sector are growing private sector are creating more employment private sector are now growing with a regional uh, and making regional impact and making international impact. And what happens here? More capital is monies are earned, more remittance into our treasury. Everybody's is smiling. Everybody's happy. So this could have this positive ripple effect. If once our global thinkers, social actors, and transformational leaders are at that table to look at all of these possibilities and you come with a debt mitigation strategy in mind to ensure that you bring in all the risk associated with the capital just food for toss all right we have pension funds you have insurance funds as another means of accessing equity capital you know and um, they're 
pension funds that makes independent partnership with entrepreneurs. These things happen across the world. They may work with uh, global intermediaries or boutique intermediaries. And um, this is another way in which um, businesses are able to access uh, this market. You have also the high net worth individual and super high net worth in individuals. High net worth individuals be businesses, business owners who are cash flow, they have liquidity, and they have enough to reinvest back into business. So one of the clever things that we see international brands are doing, they have those excess liquidity. And instead of having it sit in a 0.1% interest bearing account, they put it on the asset management. They become business partners with other, you know, thriving businesses, businesses at one scale. And they are able to cash for that uh, three, four, five percent uh, deep annual dividend yield, which is way beyond uh, sitting in, in a 0.1% interest bearing account, just food for task. So this conversation around equity capital, again, all I went into all of this is still not exhausted. And it is a conversation that we need to have in the interest of representing micro, small, medium, and large scale businesses. I love some of the small businesses, especially, you know, you have many of those who are into, you know, you know, tech innovation. Many of them are into research, medical research, and many of them are into, you know, um, agro processing. And from the research that we are doing, the people that we interface with, many of those young agro processors, if you were given a chance to build that brand with, uh, build that brand up, and you're able to leverage capital with your, 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 your GP, your general partner who is investing with you, who are coming with the right knowledge base, to not only bring the capital, but they are bringing market intelligence. So they understand the market accommodators, they understand the market enablers, and they are able to build out healthy relationships with those enablers, or they have existing healthy relationships with those enablers. So they're able to take your brand, and because they have relationship established with local, regional, and international value, train, value chain, they're able to distribute your product out right away and leverage the right public relation, branding, marketing relation uh, program to take that program, scale your brand within the shortest possible time. So there are tremendous um, possibilities here. And as we keep talking about, capital is not the ultimate success for your business, but capital is a vital part of doing business. And a striving business, you need all of this. The thing that I want to say here is that in the developed world, they have access to debt, equity, credit, capital. They have access to it. All right. And they have access to this at a significant ease in doing business. From personal experience, I'm able to walk into an international financial institution. And in less than an hour, I'm able to establish an international bank account. That international bank account can be connected across the world because of e-commerce, because of online business. In other parts of the world, you have so much of barriers and red tape that is really slowing down. The, the you know the ease of doing business. We'll get into all of that at a, not a not a day. The concept, the last concept that I want to bring here today is to talk about the credit capital market. Yes, there is such a market. Now, 
traditionally when people talk about credit, you talk about personal credit at an international level. And of course, the personal credit do exist. At an international level, you have uh, these credit institutions that uh, monitor these platforms that influenced the amount of credit that you get. And let's, let me talk about this a little bit. As it relates to personal credit, the institution that stands out in this regard, the monitoring body, the evaluation body, the people that give you the credit score, they are the experienced, Equifax, and TransUnion. They play in the private equity space. But this is what happens. Your credit score is calculated on your credit utilization. And what this means is that the more you use the credit down to the minimum balance, it affects your credit score negatively, negatively. And if your credit score is being affected negatively, it significantly reduces your chances to access credit. While this type of credit is good, it has some limitation. Now, on the flip side of this, you have corporate credit. And managing this body, you have, again, three unique institutions that stand out. You have many others. But you have Experian Business, you have Equifax Business, and you have DNP. And of course, when you understand how to play in this space, and the top 100 companies, the big companies, they understand how to play in this space, and they play in this space. Can you imagine accessing a million US dollars, five million US dollars or more at 0% APR for six, 12, and 18 months, no interest rate? How much of that can be pumped right back into the business? What kind of capital advantage would that give your business? It will give your business a tremendous competitive advantage. 0% APR for 6, 12, and 18 months. Which business don't want that? The reality is, is that Many businesses in middle income and developing economy, you don't have access to this. All right, you don't have access to, you know, strong business credit. There's no one that is, can, is working you through this process. Now, my, my talking point is this. Yes, in middle income and developing economies, we, it may not be there, but why not? Is it a conversation for us to have in the interest of ensuring that we can speak seriously to a mixed capital market to truly help to move businesses forward? Is this called private sector representation? Is this called ensuring that we can grow private sector in a way that it can create more jobs that you know they can increase their disposable income. They can re remit more, more taxes to the government. The government can smile some more because they have more money to do road infrastructure, school infrastructure, human resource development, leave throughout the country, you know, probably on fossil fuel. We now start thinking and, you know, going past thinking, but developing a game plan where we are moving heavily into a clean energy grid where we are bringing down energy costs. You might even experience zero marginal cost on energy because the technology that you're using to get energy. Can you imagine that your industries are functioning at close to zero marginal cost at energy? That gives them a tremendous competitive advantage in terms of industrialization, manufacturing. So there's a lot of possibilities here. So 
there's a lot of conversation to be had. As we begin to discuss corporate financing, we need to push the conversation beyond their capital. We need to push the conversation deeper and wider and beyond equity capital. We need to push the conversation into credit capital and corporate credit. All right. Um, there's so much more that I want to say, but I'm going to stop at this point because I believe a lot was said. I start. I I trust that this topic today was thought stimulating, and this is the vision behind Global Capital Inc. and 10x Branded and Marketing LLC out of New York is to present these strong talking points for businesses that ensure that we can bring the right thinking people to the table um, that are serious about representing private sector and interest, that are serious about working with uh, all stakeholders in the interest of growing private sector, in the interest of growing human resource development, in the interest of growing our economy and uh, having that symbiotic relationship, public, private, and partnership. All right. Um, while many are fighting uh, among trivial stuff, there are bigger issues to be looked at. There are bigger issues to be discussed in the interest of moving the country economies forward. Again, if you're in business or you intend to get into business, I want to encourage you to like, subscribe, and share. Press that notification bell. So you will be the first to get these information that we bring in to you on a regular basis. Um, this program comes to you with a kind compliments of Global Capital Inc. and 10X Branding and Marketing LLC out of New York. In the event that you're joining me for the first time, my name is Gary Thompson. I'm a business development consultant by profession. I'm a humanitarian by nature, and I'm the self-published author for several books, including Billionaire Codes and Managers Toolkit. I am also the author for 10X Branding and Marketing Blueprint, The Psychology of the business. This is the book that teaches you how to start a business and to scale it with local, regional, and international relevance. All right. So again, I trust that you would have enjoyed in today's broadcast. And uh, do continue to follow us on YouTube, on Facebook, on TikTok, on Twitter, and uh, you will be the first to get these information. Remember again, let us be a conversation. Let it be a healthy conversation where we all can in our thoughts. Use the chat box and send me your, give me your thoughts um, as relates to the subject matter that we are discussing today. Be blessed. See you in the next broadcast.